Hey everybody, uh, so I'm working on some new uh, laser designs and I uh, want to share some of my um, some of my laser workflow process. Um, so a program that I really like to use is a, is a, fr a free program. Um, it's an online free uh, CAD program. It's called Tinkercad, and uh, Tinkercad is um, it's free. I don't know where where the funding comes from. I think that it's like maybe they have a grant or something like that, like some kind of a STEM grant. Um, it, they just uh, teach people how to do CAD, and it has a very um, kind of like kid friendly uh, setup, you know. So, um, I'm working on a, uh, you can see like this little work mat thing here. Um, I'm working on inches right now. Uh, they, um, they typically, um, everything in, um, everything in, in laser is in millimeters, but, um, the, the games that I play, Pretty much, I mean, every game that I play uses an inch system for, for movement. So I want to have an inch grid. Um, and like everything that I've made, every all of the, the stuff that I've made on my own is all based on an inch system. Or some kind of inch combinatorics where it's like it's half inch tall, you know, an inch wide or whatever. So, um... But I can change. I can go in here, and then I can just change. I can say, uh, okay, I want to work in inches, or you know, like um, I want to work in millimeters, and uh, and then I can just convert it back and forth. Um, so how this program works, right, is that uh, you have shapes over here, and then you can you just uh, take a shape. And drag it onto your uh, build plate, and then you kind of manipulate it, right? So I have this is let's see, this is an inch square or inch cubed cube. Um, but I have uh, over here. I have a. This is just my my like little uh, default piece. So I know that um, what I'm working with, right? is going to be MDF. Um, so or the, the MDF comes in a few different uh, standard sizes. <clears throat> One of them is three millimeters or an, an eighth of an inch. And then uh, like two, two millimeters is another one. So uh, I'm just working on, I'm, I'm working with uh, three millimeter stuff, but you know, that, that could change. Um, these, uh, this is just a, um, I, I want to do some little like sci-fi wall stuff. And, uh, so I know that, um, like I, ha I have, um, like some other plastic kits and stuff, uh, or just like different, um, stuff that I've been kit bashing, like different styrene stuff that is all, it's all like three inches tall. So everything in my in my system is either two inches or three inches tall. And like on this scale, you know, at heroic mini scale, um, three inches is going to be like 15 feet and two inches is going to be 10, 10 feet. So, uh, I feel like that works good for fantasy and sci-fi. Um, because like, for example, when we're, when we, we would play Frostgrave, I had some 3D printed uh, walls that um, were four inches tall. And in Frostgrave, and then a lot of games are like this, if you're climbing, it takes double your movement. And then a lot of most humans or, you know, whatever, like have six inches of movement. So you have to use all of your movement to get to the top. And then if it was four inches tall, you'd have to use multiple rounds to climb to the top of something. So we, we decided that two and three inches is perfect height for 
uh, mini mini gaming terrain, right? Uh, so, um, <laughs> but getting back to this, uh, how how it works is that you you drag your shapes onto your your build plate, and then um, you join them together. Uh, so I know that I'm going to be working with three millimeter MTF, um, and then. So I, I don't join things together, I, I make cuts. Um, I just drag uh, different shapes of, of what, where my cuts would belong together, right? So um, what I want to do is kind of like an industrial like X uh, truss thing. And uh, this is kind of just a rough uh, design and then, but it, it helps me to like picture, you know, what I want that to look like. Um, just playing around with, um, with this stuff, like this, um, wait, five eighths that needs, to, oh, it's, an, it's a half inch tall. There we go. Um, these, this is not enough room for MDF. You know, it's not, it's, it's a little too flimsy of a, of a connection piece, especially if you're trying to like shove pieces of MDF together to get to get things to to join. So I think I'm going to actually just get rid of these, right? But then um, if I want to make uh, if I wanted to, you know, join all this together for like 3D printing, um, I could just go like this, and then I come over here, and then I combine all those shapes and that's what I'm left with. Um, I don't actually want it to look like that though. I want it to look like, um, uh, like this. Have this sandwiched in between like that. So, um, but this, this is a great program to just kind of picture how you want things to sort of fit together, like especially with um, with laser. I feel like it's 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 actually super super useful for laser. You can make some kind of complicated shapes with um, with this, and and like they um, they have a, like a lesson plan on here, and they'll teach you how to do CAD. Like it, it's it is like kid friendly, but but it will, you will learn how to do, actually learn how to do CAD um, using this program. So, um, but uh, with, um, with laser, right, you need to, um, you need to, first off, you need to export it into a, a laser format, right? So over here, we've got, for export, we've got, uh, for 3D printing, they have OBJ and STL, and then GLTF, I have no idea what that is. I've never, never even heard of that before. Um, but uh, OBJ and STL are standard uh, 3D printing formats, 3D formats. And then SVG is laser. Um, but what you need to do is you need to come in and then um, you need to do, uh, you need to flat pack everything. So I, this is a, a, another piece that I was playing around with. Uh, and then you can see that there's like some little artifacts kind of left over, right? Like um, the, uh, the, when I was joining things together, it, the, it kind of like, it, uh, it, it makes some little mistakes. Um, it's not that robust of a CAD program, you know? <laughs> um, what I like to do is just sort of get the general shape together, you know, like get an idea of how I want my cuts together, uh, cuts to fit together, and then I export it to uh, SVG, and then I take it into a more robust design program, right? So um, I use uh, Affinity Designer. And uh, what Affinity Designer is, it's a, um, it's not a free program, um, but so the uh, the industry standard 
for um, this is this is an SVG program, right? Um, SVG is um, it measures like angles, and um, like it, in graphic design, um, it typically when you're working with SVG, you're it's going to be like things like a like a company logo, right? So say that you uh, you you're designing a uh, a company logo, and then the company wants to be able to to blow it up and shrink it down. They want to be able to turn it into something that they can, you know, use a machine to stitch onto a shirt, like a logo onto a shirt or something. Or they want to have like a giant logo on the front of their building, you know, or a tiny one on the front of their business card, right? So you need to be able to shrink it and blow it up without seeing like pixels and things like that. So a raster, no, sorry, a vector, a vector program measures angles and stuff, right? So if I put in like text, and then this is a really good example of, of what a, a vector is. Um, it doesn't matter how much I blow it up or shrink it down. It only, it, it, it measures the curves in the, in the, um, in the, the font or whatever, like typically all fonts are vectors. Um, so, and then if you want to do laser, laser is the same thing. It, it measures the angles uh, to do the cuts. So you have to use a, a vector program, right? So the industry standard for vector is um, Adobe Illustrator, right? Adobe Illustrator is a subscription service. It's super expensive. I don't even know how much it is to, but you to use the Adobe suite for like a business license is, um, it's just ridiculously expensive. This is like a sort of a clone, uh, kind of, sort of kind of a clone of uh, Adobe Illustrator. Inkscape is another one that people like that it's a, a free, uh, it's a free program that does um, vector design, right? So this is my little six by six tile platform, right? And then I have everything color coded on here um, as either a cut or an engraving, right? So everything that's in blue is an engraving. And then everything that's over here in red is a cut. Um, so uh, I have not done like a permanent design of this piece yet. I'm still kind of playing around with it. Like when I, um, when I, when I did a cut and then I made a little tile and then I glued some plaster like dungeon tile things to it. I did in my last video, uh, if you want to, if you want to look back, um, the, uh, I, you know, I used PVA glue and then I used spray paint on it and then it kind of buckled it, you know, it curved in a little bit. So I'm still messing with the design. So none of these little cuts are permanent. I can just move them around like, uh, like this connection right here, this, this spot, like in particular is that's way too flimsy on these, um, uh, uh, on on these these uh, pieces right here, so I'm actually gonna t I'm gonna try a a test cut like this, um, and then what these are these little teeth are just um, they're just tab ends for um, when the um, you know when they're when they're lined up next to each other then I can stick something in between for uh, for for little tab ends. Um, but you know, another thing that I can do is, um, like I, ha I have, uh, like those, those wall sections that I want to work on. Right. So if I'm doing floor tiles, then I need a, um, I need a, a, a floor section to go along, to go under the wall. Right. If I'm not using like a battle mat, you know, or whatever, or like, a, uh, so I, I can take this design, right. And then I can say, okay, well, the, the wall tiles need to be one inch wide and six inches long. So I can just drag this in here 
and and what I you know what I initially did was I I did my uh, design right, and then um, I uh, um, I dragged it in here and then I traced it. I, I use these, uh, you know, I use these shapes over here. Um, but, well, mostly just the rectangle tool to come in and then uh, trace everything where I want my my cuts to be. So, uh, but yeah, I can come in here and then I can change uh, this shape. Uh, well, that came out wonky. That looks a little weird. Um, I can change, uh, change this, like how it, you know, how it keys together, but just like pull it, pull it, you know, pull it in and shrink it or like pull it out and, um, you know, mess with my design however, however I need to. Um, and you're not snapping too. But uh, that's how that's how I like to do stuff in in laser, and then I won't make um, like a permanent like this. If I was gonna sell this, you know, if I was gonna actually do um, like flat pack designs for for like for for sale, then there would be little tiny little tiny spots, little connections that you would put in, and then also this, you know, like these would be like dragged over like so, like that, uh, so that you would um, minimize the um, minim minimize the amount of time that the laser is actually going to, or, you know, like the, the amount of actual cuts. So it just really speeds up your, your workflow and, uh, you know, like when your er, production, speeds up production. Uh, so, but anyways, I will take you guys over to um, my actual laser program and I will show you that. Okay, we're over here by my laser. Um, it's really hard to see on the computer here because of the glare from the sun coming in, but um, I can go in on my laser on my uh, my program and I can change the the settings like the power and the speed and uh, that's going to change how the cuts happen on the laser. Everything on here right now is a, is a is a cut, uh, so I have that set for cuts, but I can change them to engraving or cuts, and then um, I'm going to connect to my laser. And I'm gonna send it over there, and uh, I'll show you how how uh, how it frames out. So I I send it over to the laser, and then it's gonna go ahead and do a frame out, and then that's just gonna be the area for all of the cuts, right? And then I go ahead and send it over, and it says that it's gonna take seven minutes to do all of these cuts, and um, and then as soon as it's done, then I just press this button um, and then it starts cutting. And uh, so, you know, I don't want to hear about it safety police, uh, fake safety police, like about the whole thing about having these open faced uh, diode lasers, like these so-called cheap, cheapo Chinese um, diode lasers with open face. I am never going back to another CO2 laser again. I am planning on getting an enclosure for this thing at some point, but as far as the whole diode um, laser thing goes, this this is just, I was almost done with laser cutting because of how frustrated I was with my CO2. And then this has just fixed all of my problems. So I highly recommend doing uh, switching if you're using a CO2 and then you use the, um, if you use your laser to do, uh, just to do like cuts on thin little things like this, like uh, MDF or um, 
whatever, you know, what have you, basswood, things like that, like um, small bits of plywood and stuff. You know, if you if you need a heavy duty laser, then, you know, go ahead and get a CO2 or get a get a, a metal tube, you know. Um, but uh, for, for most hobbyists, I think like 90% of hobbyists that are going to be using it for this kind of stuff, like cutting cardboard or MDF or balsa, you know, basswood, like that kind of thing. These, these guys are, um, they're the way to go. So, uh, so anyways, yeah, um, I'm going to try out these new runners and I will, uh, I'll keep you posted. I'll give you an update on whether it be, uh, it's improved the design or not.